Hey guys, Dan here from VHX411. Today in front of me I have two Subaru ECUs. Uh, in this video I will show you how the clone process is done. Uh, let's say you had a bad Subaru ECU and you want to replace it with another good used donor or a new one, doesn't really matter. I'll show you how the key and bin cloning process is done. Uh, if you have a programmer, you can do it yourself. Uh, suggest get an original programmer don't get an aftermarket one because you might lose keys and bin number while reading it from the original ECU so original programmer is key when doing keys or anything that way you're not losing any data all right if it's your first time here like share subscribe otherwise let's go I'll show you how it's done two ECUs EE, same part number exactly, one's original, one's new. Ready, got them all taken apart and cleaned out so we can save some time. The purpose of reading and writing key information and VIN number is because if you do need to replace it, and you did replace it and the car wouldn't start, this is a great way to do it. You can actually have a locksmith program your keys, but most of the time you won't be able to rewrite the VIN number. Even a dealer can't do it. So it's always better to do a clone service and call it a day. I uh, got my car probe set up to 93C86. This is the 93C86 EEPROM. If you can see it right here, got it cleaned up, ready to roll. So we got EEPROM, I'm using CarProg. I mean, there is a way you can do it with the K tag, but it won't read key and VIN information. Key and VIN information is stored in some Subarus in the EEPROM. Some of them could be the processor, depends on year and make and model, and depends on the EEPROM too. Uh, yeah, it'll show you with K tag actually. As you can see over here, you can read a map files which is tuning files if you had a tune in it so it's stored in the processor and you got to connect it directly to the board solder it on or put it on the bdm platform and then read this processor right here so tuning files are here key information is an epom in this particular ecu so let me clip it on there now, if you need this service done, don't have a programmer, link in the description below or at the end of the video. Otherwise, connected it. Let me hit read. I already set up my car probe to read that specific EEPROM 86. <clears throat> As you can see, I just read the key information right here, key information right here, key information right here. And then of course the bin number information here. So I will save this original data. Let's just go here. I'll just save it as a super ECU. And we wanna make sure it's original one. Save it and we will move on to a good donor one with exact same part number. Again, the promise cleaned. Pin number one to a clip number one side. And I always read the original file from the new ECU, just in case. So as you can see, we read the VIN number, read the key information, and we will just save it as a new ECU. Now what I'm gonna do is load up my Subaru. EC original file, load it back up to my laptop, and I will push right. Let me make sure we have a good connection. So as you can see, 
it does not want to write a full file that's why a lot of times the dealer cannot rewrite the bin number uh, with a scan tool or any tool heck I'm trying to do it directly to a chip can't do it either so what I'm gonna have to do is <clears throat> Got my solder iron already warm. I'll mark pin number one because I will have to remove it. Now you can try removing the chip from the original one and putting it into a new donor one, but catch is heating it up while reading it or you know, with a bad programmer or uh, heating it up while removing it could corrupt the file and you won't be able to start the car. All right, let me get my... Grab my heat. Okay. Get it out of the way. And warm it up for about 30 seconds and we'll do the chip. Okay. So EEPROM removed, while it's cooling off, I will clean my board with acetone. Get all that silicone out of there, shiny stuff. Now. <clears throat> I will also clean up my track. As you can see, they're pointing out in different directions and we wanna make it as smooth as possible when we put our EEPROM back on there. That way it is nice and smooth. And even also. Now you can see it's nice, smooth, just like the factory. All right, by this time the EEPROM should cool off. Pin number one is here. I will set it to pin number one. Now try writing it again. All right. Written the file. Make sure you put it back in its place on pin number one. We don't want to ruin anything. So pin number one side of the EEPROM must go to the pin number one of the board. Okay. soldered make sure it's a good connection nice and smooth and clean again <clears throat> I like to make sure it's all clean around it no excess solder and there you have it written the keys and the VIN number only without touching the tuning files if you need the service link in the bank at the end of the video or at the description below like what you see subscribe like and do share. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.